Hey, a bit of Steve from that old Yorkshire geek, and a bit of Star Trek news. Uh, Terry Metallus, the showrunner for season three of Star Trek Picard, has said he wants to take Star Trek back to its naval roots. Uh, that was me doing a quote. Sorry, you can't see me nothing here, can you? I should put the camera back over there, but what the hell? then you wouldn't see this amazing LCARS display that's on YouTube. The link's in the description. Anyway, let's have a look at this story I'm talking about. There it is. This is from uh, redshirtsalwaysdie.com. As usual, link's in the description down there. Or if you're watching it on an app, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Uh, and don't forget, uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, hit the notification bell, so then you're warned when I'm doing things, um, share the videos, drop a comment in the comment section. I'm also on Rumble. Uh, a lot of people have said they don't like Rumble. Don't know why. It's just like YouTube, but green. <laughs> uh, I'm also on Rumble, uh, Anchor.fm, uh, Spotify... Amazon Music Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, I can never remember what it's called. And I'm also on the social medias on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The links for all those are in the description. And I've also got two books out. The links are in the descriptions for them as well. Whatever. Right. Terry Metallus wants to take Star Trek back to the original series with his naval approach. Will Star Trek become more militarised in Picard's final season? And before we start... <coughs> Um, there was somebody talking about this while watching a, a YouTube stream last night. Um, it, was, it, was, it was the podcast, um, the podcast guys, Brian and Shane. And in the chat, uh, somebody was talking, I can't remember, apologies if you're watching this, you're probably not, but apologies, I can't remember your name, I can't remember who it was. Um, but somebody was talking about how um, in Star Trek they're always explorers, it's not military, it's quasi-military. Yes, they have ranks and stuff like that, um, but uh, it's it's not military. They're explorers. They're not warriors, and um, yeah, fair enough. They are explorers, but it is a military organisation. They said Gene Roddenberry always said it, it wasn't a military um, organisation, Starfleet. Uh, but he didn't even create Starfleet, did he? He created uh, what well, United Earth Space Patrol Agency, and it. I think it was Gene Koontz and uh, Robert Justman that came up with like um, Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets. Anyway, um, this person on um, we're talking about that, and uh, I didn't respond because I didn't want to get into a can of worms arguing with somebody. But I was thinking, uh, if Starfleet's not military, then they've got a hell of a lot of weapons at their disposal, and um, they seem to have a, a very military approach to things. Even in um, the original series, you know, they had court marshals and all stuff like that which is a military thing um, plus I was just thinking if Starfleet wasn't military um, they wouldn't have won the Dominion War would they? The Dominion would have just rolled over the, the Alpha Quadrant and the Beta Quadrant um, like nothing uh, if Starfleet wasn't military uh, so it is um, anyway let's have a read of this Star Trek has, at least in modern shows, kind of lost what the series was actually about. One of the earliest episodes in the original series, um, in season one, was um, Balance of Terror. And if that's not a military episode, I don't know what is. It was a submarine in space having submarine space battles and meeting aliens. It's a simple concept. Um, all right, they're agreeing with me. <laughs> Uh, yet a lot of shows kept diving into where explorers and scientists motifs, which they are, they're both, uh, without ever acknowledging the entire premise of the show was that they were a branch of the military. Um, the Navy but with space whales instead of earth whales, that's something Terry Metallus, the showrunner of Star Trek Picard, is changing. He wants to steer into the space navy concept even more than past shows, feeling that they've moved too far away from the original in that regard. I mean, it could be argued that uh, even the military today, uh, you know, the, the navies of the world do undertake scientific research and exploration, don't they? They're always going places and, and testing things, not, mil not necessarily weapons, you know, they're, they're you know, doing atmospheric tests and going to Antarctica and, you know, measuring the ice shelves and stuff like that. They're always doing scientific research, aren't they? 
Metalis spoke to TrekMovie.com about that very concept, and they've put it in text that I can hardly see on my monitor. It might show up better on the, the screen. I will highlight it, shall I, so I can read it better. There we go. I very much prefer Starfleet to feel like the Navy, and certainly the original series and a lot of what Star Trek 2 II and 6 director uh, Nicholas Meyer did feels like uh, that the most. Because um, he based it on um, Horatio Hornblower, didn't he? That was his inspiration. Uh, and the trailer, as does the first episode, starts with an air of pomp and circumstance. So it's just getting a feel of what I think Starfleet should feel like. It's the military. It's serious. There are protocols and that sort of permeates throughout the seasons. Season. Again, harkening back to what I said earlier about this being the military and how legacy characters like Picard and Riker tend to be able to throw their weight around within this organisation and get special treatment doesn't always sit well with everyone within the Navy. Uh, Starfleet should always be seen as a military concept, uh, as a military in concept. Whether you agree with Metallus about how you should see Starfleet, he's right. Everything that Gene Roddenberry used to create Starfleet in the original series was derived from his time as an Army Air Force pilot, progenitor to the Air Force. Uh, yeah, it was the, the USAAF, the United States Army Air Force, wasn't it, before? Before it was the United States Air Force, which I think, was it 1947? Coincidental with uh, Roswell. <laughs> uh, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, as with real militaries, they too have science, medical and engineering divisions. They too do more than patrol. They also explore, which I've just talked about. So many of the world's greatest inventions came from the United States military and the British Navy. Uh, my favourite is the Slinky. Oh, is that an, so is that, that's what the US Navy <laughs> has given to the world, the Slinky. So yes, Starfleet can have its adventures and whatnot, just as long as everyone knows there's a chain of command and you better follow it. So yes, oh, is that it? Oh, they're quicker, won't it? Um, so yes, a lot of people say, you know, they're not warriors, they're explorers, but they're the warriors as well. It is a military organisation. Um, you know, as a star, there's a Starfleet Academy where you, you um, uh, graduate, uh, you know, become an ensign or, or higher, depending, you know, how well you do. Um, Savic, for instance. Um, so yeah, so don't say they're just explorers. They're not just explorers. They are, you know, soldiers as well. Um, but there are civilians within Starfleet, as as we have seen. You know, there are scientists working with Starfleet. Um, so there we go. So don't just say, you know, star, don't say modern Star Trek is not like you know, old Star Trek in that it's too too much pew pew and explosions. Um I mean we all like a good space battle, don't we? Um but there is you know there is still exploration to be had. And I'm hoping Terry Metallus is gonna do that. But I've heard that the, the middle of season three is very action oriented. We'll see, we'll see. Right, we'll leave it there. So that was just a quickie a quickie Star Trek you won. Right, so thanks for watching, wherever you are in the universe, look after each other, and until next time, I'll see you there.